Hello, uh, my name is John Lambert, I'm with Benchmark. Uh, last time I did the video I just showed basic uh, horizontal shaft alignments. I'm going to go and do the same sort of thing today but with a little bit of a difference. Um, we, take, uh, we take the unit, uh, this is a, a measuring unit, we take it right out of the box, already mounted on the, uh, on the bracket. Uh, we hang this chain off it, place the chain onto the shaft, <clears throat> and tighten the chain. Okay, I already had the S unit mounted, that was the M unit uh, going on because this is going to be my movable machine and this is going to be my stationary machine. Okay. Uh, my display is already on and you can see all the programs that I actually do have in this uh, uh, mid-range system which is called an E540. It actually has uh, shaft alignment programs, digital belt alignment programs, vibration and it also has a, uh, a values menu. Uh, I'm going to go and do uh, shaft, shaft to shaft alignment, so I've got to accept that. Under that program, I have horizontal, which is what I'll be doing. I have vertical. I also have multi coupling, three couplings, and I have a software program. If I wanted to, I can actually just pick up the software program and actually just do a, a software measurement on this machine. Uh, however, my intention is to go and do uh, horizontal alignments as well. So I'll choose the horizontal program. <clears throat> uh, it's come out, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's come on and it's actually showing how uh, the machine is orientated. Uh, the way it's showing me right now is it's actually showing the movable on this side and the stationary on this side. Now, uh, I can easily change that. I can just push this button here and it'll flip it around to um, so that the movable, which is this machine, is going to be on the left hand side, and the stationary, which is going to be, say, a pump, for instance, is on my right hand side. So, the first thing it's asking me for is the dimensions. It needs the dimensions in order for it to calculate how much shim it's going to be able to put under uh, the machine's foot or move it left to right. So, I have to put in the basic geometry uh, readings. So the first reading that this is it's prompting me, and by the way, if you look at the top, it says enter distances uh, MF1, movable foot one, to movable foot two. So it's the distance between the machine's feet, which is six inches. So I input the six and press enter. Now it's asking me the distance between MF2, which is this one, movable foot two, and the, uh, the M units. So, the tape measure measurements are uh, more than enough adequate for this sort of measurement. Uh, we only, we're going to be reading live time, so we just need to have it sort of like close. And by close, I'm talking about a quarter of an inch. Um, but the closer you are, the more, uh, more uh, the, the better the results as it were. So, that was three inches, so I'm going to input that. And now it's asking me the distance between the two heads. So it's from the center of the shaft to the center of the shaft. So I just measured from the outside to the inside of one. And it's six and a half inches, so it's six point five. Enter. And the last measurement is to the center of the coupling. Now, that's from the S unit to the center of the coupling. But as you can see, I do not have a coupling in position right at this moment. Uh, so I'm just going to make it to the center of the uh, of, of the two shafts, which actually is three and a half inches. So I've input that and I'm ready to go. Look, just a point, uh, you measure misalignment at the center of the coupling, you correct it at the machine's feet. It's important to know where the center of the, uh, of the two heads uh, is. So uh, I've done that and I'm now ready to go and take the measurement. Before I do that, I need to be able to set them up. If you look at the beam that's on my hand, you'll be able to see that it's actually a straight line. It's not a, it's not a dot uh, anymore. You can also see uh, that the slot is actually an inch and a quarter long, so it's got lots of trap. Uh, it's one of the largest um, detector services on the market. Um, in order for me to set the beams up, I want to be able to put it in the midst of its travel. So just like a dial indicator, I have a travel indicator and I put it in the midst of the travel so I can move both sides. I do the same with, with the laser system. 
It's not a big deal, very simple to be able to undo. Here is my S unit. I can take my S unit, I can loosen it, and I can slide it up and down, and I can look on the M side, and you can see that's three thou, and I tighten it back up again, and as I tighten it, it moves off a little bit, but it's under 20 thou, which is my, what my uh, goal is. On this side, as you can see the beam, I can actually move it up with the thumb wheel here, and I can bring it in to the midst of its range, and that would be more than enough. I'm quite happy with it. I can actually zero it if I wanted to, but that's not necessary. So I've actually taken, I've set my machine up now so I can actually go and do a horizontal shaft alignment. However, if you see the buttons on the bottom, this button on the far side is what's called a software program. So I'm gonna go and have a look at the software program. So I press enter and the machine prompts me to be able to put both heads in the, at the 12 o'clock position. Now if you look at the screen again, you'll see that it has an inclinometer on one side, or actually on both sides, and they're very closely set up. This is 3.2, and this is well, the same 3.2, but it needs to be able to measure at the top, so I have to move them to the top of its travel as well. So, this is the movable side. You will see the movable move, and I'm going the wrong way, uh, but I'll bring it back in, and I want to be able to get it, well, that's close enough. As long as it's within a degree, uh, I'm happy. Now I'll move the stationary side, and it jumps a little bit, but I'm actually taking a little too far. I'll be happy with that. I've actually positioned it now, so it's right at the very top of its travel, and uh, now I will be able to go and take a reading. But a word of warning on, the, on software. This is a software guide. All lasers, uh, regardless of who makes them, uh, really they're only guides. You can't blindly just believe what uh, uh, what the number, what the value is. You have to go and check it out to be actually really certain of what you're actually measuring. And the reason for that is, is uh, the lasers are always mounted on the shaft, so it's measuring shaft deflection. If the foot is at an angle, like this, or like this, like this, or like this, it will change. Laser systems, it doesn't matter even if you have a wizard that's using it, they cannot measure angle in this plane. You have to be able to um, just take it as a guide and then re-measure it using something else. Let me just show you. So it's asking me to take the first reading. I press, and it prompts me to press OK, so I'll press OK. It moves to the screen, I loosen it up, I have 3,000, I tighten it up, and move to the next foot. Loosen it up, tighten it up, press Enter, and move to the next foot. Loosen it up, tighten it up. Center. Last foot, loosen, tighten, enter. I now have all uh, of the information that I need to be able to go and analyze what I've got. Remember our MAD training. MAD training stands for measure, analyze, take action, and then document. Well, I've measured, I now analyze. I'm looking at it, it says two and a half thou here, and seven and a half thou. It's measuring just, a, you can see that it's always in the diagonal. It, you'll always get soft foot in the diagonal. It won't be on one side. If it's on one side, you actually have a problem. It would more likely be pipe strain or something else like that. But uh, I just want to let, make sure that you're aware, even though I have measured it, what I would probably go and do if I was in the field is I would follow it up with a simple measurement using a feeler gauge in order to make, make sure that I had the correct angle. Based on this, I'm just going to make some changes. So I'm going to put the appropriate shim under the right foot. And I'm now going to go and re-measure. So I press the button. I open the foot. Close the foot. 
move to the next. And there's my results. I'm under a thou. My soft foot, my soft foot program actually calls for two thousandths of an inch as a tolerance. So I'm well underneath it. But I can't stress on you enough, use it as a guide. It will measure shaft deflection like everybody else's laser system. However, uh, don't forget that you should also check it out with a favor gauge. So now I've finished and I'm now gonna go move into my horizontal. Now the last time we actually videoed the horizontal alignment, you'll notice there was a coupling. Well, you can't really measure soft foot with a coupling on, so we've removed the coupling. Yes, you can open the coupling and that's, that's, that's just as good, but in this instance, we've actually opened it, we've taken, we've removed it. So I'm gonna go forward. So I'm actually gonna bring it down and I'm gonna start off at what we call the nine o'clock position. So uh, as you can see, I'm moving it down. The inclinometer drops down to the lower, heart, to the lower side. And uh, here, I'm actually taking this inclinometer because I'm moving the end units and I'm going to start kind of about, uh, was close to 90 degrees. Uh, and that's, that's pretty good. 89.8.9 is actually pretty good. Now I'll move the S unit and you can actually see the S unit with the little yellow sticker and the line. I'm going to put one line right on top of the other. And I've actually got 90 on that. I'm happy. Um, I'll take my first reading. Now it's accepted the reading, and what I will go and do now is I will bring it up to the 12 o'clock position. Okay, now I let it, sit, uh, let it settle. I'm not in a rush, I want to get it right. Press enter, and it's taken that reading. Now I'm going to bring it down to the 3 o'clock position. Now I'm moving the S unit, and I've got 80, 89.8. Uh, 89.6, I'd be happy. Take my last reading. 80. And you now see all the results. Remember, we measure, we analyze, and um, we then make our corrections. Now, just to give you some explanation again, on this side of the screen, it's the uh, vertical. So that's how many shim we've got to add or remove. Uh, it's actually, uh, it's 4 thou of offset, that's this, okay? The angle is one and a half thou per inch, so that's the size of it. That's on the vertical plane. On the other side, we actually have 26 and a half thou uh, of offset, which is a lot, and negative four, which is uh, a lot for, uh, for angular. Now, <clears throat> however, if we look, it's like time, this is what these two arrows are, and actually it's skewed a little bit, so we have to make a correction here. But if we look at these two measurements, it actually is saying that it's a positive, which means we've got to remove. Now, unfortunately, we cannot remove anything. We're all the way down. We actually do have 4,000, uh, 3,000 here, uh, but we've got nothing here. On this side, we've got 7,000, nothing at the back. So we can't go down. So in other words, we're base bound. I'll set a tolerance, so I'll come up, and the most popular RPM is 1725, so I will, that's in between 1000 and 2000. So I'll accept that. And as you can see, they're all in the red. So I want to be able to go and make, uh, make, make some corrections. You can actually see it's 21,000 that I've actually got to go move to the foot. So when, when you want to get a true live reading, I always like to be able to trim, the, uh, move the horizontal plane first because if you imagine it's like two circles coming together, as they get closer in the uh, horizontal plane, it might change a little bit the, uh, the vertical. So I will trim it. You can see it's minus 21, I'm down to minus eight and a half. And then half fell, so let's move to four, so I'll just do that a little bit more. And we're going to leave it there. I'm going to retine it. And I'm quite happy with that. You can actually see it's all coming green. So I'm actually in a very good condition. But now I want to be able to go lifetime at the top. So I'll just move, press this button, select that, 
It's my position sensor, so I can actually, you can see the indicators. And I'm moving up, and I want to get as close to the top as possible. That's pretty good. Do the same with the M unit. Oop, going too far. Okay, now to remove that, press that button. And you can see it has changed it a little bit. It's actually asking for 10 and 3. So during the analysis, uh, we'll just look at the screen. Now uh, you can see that it's actually, uh, uh, it's both in the red, meaning that it's, uh, that it's out of spec. Uh, so I have to go make some changes. And as I said, it's both base bound, so I can't go down. So I have to look at it and see, uh, see what I can go and do. Um, when you measure, it doesn't matter what you measure, you measure from a reference. If I wanted to measure how far across here is, it's five inches, but my reference point is here. So from here to here is five inches. When I'm measuring shaft to shaft alignment, I'm measuring this shaft in relation to this shaft. So this is my reference, and I move this shaft uh, to be in line with this. Okay, so right now I have to make some changes because I can't go down, I have to go and do something else. So what I can do is I can change the reference point. That's this machine. So in order to be able to do that, the only place that I can actually make corrections is at the machine's feet. So what I'll go and do is if you look at the screen, this button here, it's actually got a lock on it. I can push that button. And it's actually giving me a view, a different view of the setup it is now. And it's the same results. We're looking at vertical. It's four and a half, one thousand of uh, four and a half of offset and one thou per inch, remember. And the corrections are remove 10 and remove three. Can't do it. If I press this button, it actually asks me for the other dimensions of the machine. The first dimension it's, it's asking me for, you can see the yellow highlight, is from the center of the mounting rod to this to the front foot, which is 2.5, enter. And the distance between the machine's feet, which again is six inches. And now it's now that it's got all the additional information, I can now scroll over. And what I can go and do is I can lock this foot and this foot. Or I could lock these two feet. Or a combination of both. I could lock this foot and this foot, or vice versa. Whatever I want, whatever I choose. In order for me to do that, I'm going to uh, scroll, you'll see me scroll to the far side, and I will lock that foot. And now I will scroll over, and this foot's already locked. I'll lock this foot and this foot. So now I will go and look at the result. So it's changed. Look, what it's, what it's doing now is it's actually telling me that I can add four and a half thou to this foot, and two and a half thou to this foot. So in other words, I lift the inboard feet up and down and I should get the results I want. So, I don't have two and a half thou, I only have three thou, and I can't really make one, so I will put three thou in, so it's gonna be a little bit heavier. And I'll put the four under the front foot of the movable machine. Now, all I need to be able to do, as you can see it's in spec, all I need to be able to do now is remeasure. So I'm gonna go and do that. I press this button. It says, do you wanna remeasure the coupling? I say yes. I will bring my S unit, and you can see it moving down. And let's take my first reading. Oh, I'll bring my S unit up to the 12 o'clock position. This should be close enough. I'm gonna go and take my next reading. Uh, one more reading to take. So I'm gonna bring it all the way over. Maybe a correction here, I went, I've gone over, over a little bit. I'm happy there. I'm gonna take my results. Yeah, the survey says, I've got a perfect alignment. I'm delighted with that. Now then, um, what I will go and do now is I'm going to go and put the coupling on and I'm going to go and re-measure it again to make sure that everything's fine. 
Okay, so uh, what we've been able to do is we've just slid back the shafts, put the coupling on, put the uh, shafts back in, and we've tightened it all up. And we're ready to go and remeasure uh, with our easy time program. So I'm actually at the nine o'clock position or close to it, and you can actually see my setup is, is all ready to go. So I'm just going to take my first reading. Now, watch how much I have to move the head in order to get 20 degrees of movement. That's it. As soon as they go yellow, that means I've moved just 20 degrees. And I will take my second view. Now, I have to move it another 20 degrees. So I'm just going to move it up. That's it. Another 20 degrees. You can see how much I've moved it. Very good. 40 degrees total. Now, as you can see, I'm in the green, so I've got a great alignment, and I was only necessary for me to move it a total of 40 degrees. But if there was something that was restricting me from actually moving it, a pipe or anything else, that's the minimum distance that you have to be able to move it. Um, so I'm happy. Uh, I've got uh, beyond my bolt bound problem, and I've made my horizontal changes, and I've been able to uh, make the corrections that I go need. And I've only moved it a small amount of the angle when I moved it here. You have to be careful when you're actually using this program that you're not going to create pipe strain or you say, let's say for instance, it was a fan. You don't want to move the fan, the fan in the cowling because you can change the drawer, etc. So you still have to do the analysis. You still have to be able to think. Now remember, I told you that our, our MAD training program. MAD stands for Measure, Analyze, Act, Take Action. Whether it's in action, whether you don't do anything, it's still an act. And then you document. So now we're in a position where we want to be able to document. Remember, our documentation can actually be printed. So we have, um, uh, we can actually have it in the printed format. And you can have, uh, uh, you can have that. Now, uh, also as a file that you can email, obviously, anywhere. So in order to, uh, to save it, under the chevrons, I go to my file management program. And again, I, for simplicity, I'm just going to save this as A, B, C. Yeah, save, and that's, it's saving. So I have now documented it. If you need any help uh, in any of this that you've actually seen or you have any questions that you want to have answered and it doesn't matter if you've got somebody else's laser or anything else if you want support we're here for you uh, we're the canadian national distributor of uh, easy laser products and so we can uh, but we can also help you with machinery installation one of the main things that we do is training that's machinery installation training okay now you can follow us on twitter uh, please uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. Uh, also, you can see us on LinkedIn. Best thing to do is go to our website, www.benchmarkpdnprecisiondrivenmaintenance.com. And if you've got any questions, post them there. We'll be glad to help. Thank you very much for watching.